okay. We are on the seventh week, three, 3D computer graphics and visualization, second week. Okay. So let's get started with the lecture. Before the lecture, uh, quickly review where we are, okay. We, we already exactly on the middle of the semester and also next week, midterm exam, but actually our midterm exam scheduled on May 21st. Next week, we, we will have the class, okay? So don't forget to have this class, okay? <coughs> Half of the semester. Okay, time goes fast, as always. List it up. Four separate items you have to uh, mind, okay? Lab exercises, midterm exam, final project, and other mandatory participation. This mandatory par participation, guest lecture series, for example, uh, Professor Choi from Central Oklahoma University will teach you, will guide you how to use uh, Rabbit and Beam for interior architects, okay? I'm not sure, it's not fixed, but around the last week of May and the first week of June, okay? Possibly different hours from this class, but hopefully you can uh, show up. And also, the page listed up what to do today. Uh, the second week, of computer visualization, okay? 3D visualization, we are, we are not dealing with Revit or BIM applications. Instead, for your design development, design visualization, and on extension of your lectures from the last semester, we're gonna deal with some 3D geometric modeling issues as well as visualization issues using default render of 3D Max, Mental Ray, and V-Ray, okay? V-Ray is a plugin to 3D Max. But anyway, behind the technology for renderer, they are the same, but totally different interface. We're gonna look at that on today, too. So, lab exercise number one is just the environment setup. Two, three is a type of geometric modeling issue. Four, five, modeling and rendering. I name it pseudo building interior. Pseudo building interior means just surface based uh, building modeling. Interior of the building, a room, okay? Using a box shape, one of the primitives. In Revit, you have to model walls, doors, windows, slab, ceiling, rooftop, and so on as the building exists, but actually in 3D Max, this kind of computer graphics tool, we don't need to model precisely, exactly, same to real building. So that's why we, we're gonna use a type of simplified box shape for making your indoor visualization. Anyway, as an extension from uh, last week's computer graphics class. As a review, let's take a look at quickly about 3D Max and any other type of computer graphics geometric tool, okay? The same as 3D Max. Our class is partially overlapped from the last week. Some lecture part quickly reviewed from the last week. Some, some important parts as always, okay? So let's quickly review and uh, keep going on. So, this slide shows you very simplified but very important almost everything of 3D Max, even other general 3D tools, okay? Modeling, rendering, animation. Animation is series of rendering images. So actually only two things, modeling, rendering, but modeling very hard and time consuming. We don't have time to teach you any one type of specific uh, features of modeling. It's too complicated. Instead, we have to 
know behind the technologies, mechanisms, and some fundamental approaches, how to create and modify object, I mean geometric object, okay? Rendering has lots of things to take care of. Lights, material, reflection, refraction, intensity, many keywords you have to remind so that you can apply that technique to different type of renders or any type of 3D visualization tools. In terms of geometric modeling, we have to use 2D geometry and 3D objects and we have to reuse your geometric model from 3D warehouse or your teammates CAD file, 3D Max file, Sketcher file, importable file formats, okay? And then iteration of modification, never ending modification, okay? Rendering, I list up these four steps, but actually very simple. Material, lights, camera, and render, okay? That's basic process, but lots of things, lots of techniques you have to mind. That's, that's the issue. And also I listed up very fundamental hotkeys of 3D Max so that you can simply make something, visualize something in 3D Max interface, okay? And also I listed up this one before, last week, 3D Max user scenario for interior architecture design. Defining UOD is the most important thing. What is the simplified universe? Plane, okay, large plane, and your furniture, your object, your interior object, one single box. Anyway, some objects. And daylight system or photometric lights and the camera or just perspective view, okay? And some material assigned. And then you can create one type of photorealistic rendering outputs. That is very uh, basic, fundamental environment, universe, okay? Universe of your discourse, that is UOD. And modeling, in terms of modeling, you have to model environment first. What is your environment? A building, or surrounding buildings, or exterior scenes, okay? And your design elements, interior design finishes, design features, objects, wall objects or some specific, specialized interior features and so on. So under each category, I placed something else, modeling universe for using plane. We don't need words actually, okay? Just flat plane is looking like a wall. So anyway, sky outside view, outside view can be one single flat image, okay? And then you can make that visualization is looking realistic, kind of fake, pseudo environment. And also your object should be, can be imported and you have to draw 2D sketch, 3D modeling, and never ending modification. That's the process. Rendering, important features are here. And back and forth, okay? Update, geometry, rendering, visualization visualize, and then if you get some final images in 2D still scene, you can retouch it. Or if you want to get uh, animation, you have to, anyway, retouch by using 2D graphic tools such as Photoshop and so on. So also I listed up this, this one last week, but let's, let's talk about this one briefly again. Defining UOD is the first thing you have to do. And modeling is very hard, hard to do and time consuming. So that is why you have to reuse some predefined geometry. And anything you want to create, that model is supposed to be something realistic, okay? We are dealing with some actual real objects such as building components, 
furniture or some architectural elements. So all edges smooth using norms, bevel, or some geometric editing tools. Or handle them in rendering options, mental way, edge smooth, render option, and so on. Anyway, for high quality and some good visualization, you have to take care of some uh, techniques, mechanisms, and so on. And also, you have to know uh, image retouch. And one of our lab exercises next or next after next week, we will deal with that part. Okay, as one of the lab exercise issues. So we last week you submitted lab exercise result using 3D Max and Mental Ray, and probably you may know what's the pros and cons of using Mental Ray. Okay, it's easy to use and flexible. Okay, and as you know. So one of the major reasons of mental, <coughs> mental ray is there are amount of predefined materials, <coughs> okay? All predefined, defined by uh, some professionals, okay, experts. All predefined presets, and that is why it's physically accurate. Physically accurate means you don't need to take care of the size of tiles, size of stone, and so on, because all are in human scale, architectural scale, okay? It's simply because it is for architecture and design material. So if you choose some wood frame or uh, wood floor material, that wood size, wood piece size, gonna be supposed to be architectural, human scale, okay? You don't need to control its millimeter width and height. That is why you have to control your units without any confusion. If your model is too small, the lighting system or photometric lights are going to be too bright. Okay. If your model is too big, simply, even if you put amount of lightings using photometric light system, Anyway, your visualization is going to be very dark because it's too huge area. So you have to take care of scale, dimension, units. And we're going to deal with that part before the lab exercise. And anyway, round corners, even in renderer level, also we're going to deal with this part again by using Manta Ray. You can make your objects, corners, rounded, okay, in renderer level. If, even if geometric shape has very sharp edge, sharp corner. And indirect illumination, so-called uh, global illumination, GI, okay. In 3D Max, there is GI, and there is another concept, final gather, FG, and you can control such uh, very uh, powerful features of renderer for your visualization. In a nutshell, this is totally ray trace based, okay? Ray trace means uh, any type of sun rays or lighting rays, even if it's reflective rays, mathematically counted, computed, calculated, okay? The same as your human eye interacts with lights. That is why this one can create something very realistic, okay? The reason to bring this interface issue again is simply to explain why 3D computer graphics is hard to learn, but actually you have to comprehend, understand behind the technologies and this kind of interface issues so that you can avoid some unnecessary technical features such as interface issues, icon, button, menu issues. Instead, you can keep working on some, some <coughs> important 
intrinsic problems. What is that intrinsic problems? Design, okay? You are designers, not 3D Max users, not SketchUp experts. That is kind of consequential. Anyway, anyway, why 3D Max is looking very hard to learn? CLI, command line interface, in AutoCAD, you type line or some explode to explode the geometric objects and so on. That is one type of command line interface. But usually, black screen, white fonts in, 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 in the Hollywood movies, hackers are using that interface, okay? CLI interface. L looking professional. But most of you guys are working with GUI interface, graphical user interface, using icons, menu bars, ribbon interface, and so on. And also you are using tablet computers or handphone, smartphones, by using touch interface. The touch interface is one of the natural user interface, okay? But actually, for making 3D geometry, NUI is kind of ideal. What if you are moving your hand on the air and that shape can be created by your uh, gesture? In that case, your 3D objects can be modified, edited, created by your hand easily, okay? Such as 3D laser scanner, okay? 3D laser scanner can create geometry, 3D geometry by simple scan, okay? Or even image processing, 2D pictures to 3D geometric model, such as Autodesk 1 to 3D catch by using your smartphone apps, you can create 3D images. And, and it's very uh, affordable, actually free, available on your smartphone nowadays. Anyway, something beyond the keyboard and mouse, tens of, using tens of devices. This is ideal way of creating, manipulating 3D objects, okay? Half of GUI and NUI some new type of interface. But this is reality, okay? This is ideal, and this is real, real environment. Think about 3D Max interface and most, most of other 3D tools, Rhino, SketchUp, and so on. We are handling 3D objects on 2D screen. Anyway, your computer screens are all 2D. Even if you are creating 3D geometry in 3D Cartesian coordinate system, that one's supposed to be projected on this kind of flat screen, okay? That is why you have to rotate or you have to divide top view, front view, left view, and perspective view, separate views, okay? Simply because this is flat 2D, even if it's in 3D geometry. So you have to orbit, zooming in and out, control by using mouse click. Very complicated, okay? 3D model in 2D interface, that is not an ideal way. But your current environment, okay? Too complex options, too many functions, too many icons, okay? In 3D Max. That is why it hinders learning 3D Max or 3D geometric modeling. So this gap, ideal way and real way, actual your current environment, this gap makes you hard to get 3D Max. But this is just one reason of interface issue. If you understand and if you know behind the mechanism, and if you know how to reuse that mechanism to different interface, in other words, if you know 3D Max or SketchUp, it's, it's behind the technologies. Learning Rhino, learning Maya, just interface, user interface issues remained, okay? Nothing totally new. Everything is same. So what you need to know is Maya's new interface, Blender's interface, and then you can use that new application just in you know, a one day like an expert, hopefully. Anyway, 
this is the interface issue. But the actual reason why 3D Max was similar 3D software is hard to learn. Okay, actually I roughly introduced you this one when you were freshman, I think. Ray tracing, global illumination, so-called GI, okay? Bump mapping, shading. Phone shading is one type of shading. Busier curve, spline, knobs curve, control point, control vertice, CV, segment, UVW, polygon mesh, sweeping, lathing, and camera and focal distance, camera lens type, and so on, okay? So, hopefully, most of them are very well known to you guys here, I think. Even if you cannot explain, I think you know those terms, okay? If you technically comprehend the terms listed up here, it's ready to learn any other type of 3D software or any other type of computer graphics applications. Of course, in the lower level, this one thing, global illumination or knobs, this is very huge area. In lower level, there are amount of things you have to know, very uh, computational and mathematical, very complicated, but you don't need to know some that kind of lower level. What we need to know is what it is and how to use, how to implement it in current 3D software, okay? So this is what I explained to you before when you were experiencing this kind of design computing class, even at freshman level, okay? Without understanding the terms described here, Learning 3D Max is same to memorizing the order of clicking buttons, okay? You can mind, you can memorize sequence of clicking buttons, the same as general computer books, computer tutorial guides you, okay? But what if interface has been changed? You have to memorize again and again, okay? <laughs> But if you know the me mechanism, user interface issue is kind of minor thing, okay, minor issue. Of course, get used to it is kind of time consuming, but not several days, couple of hours enough, I think, okay? So, memorizing the order of clicking buttons, that's easy, the first stage, okay? But hopefully you can get further stages, second, third stages, to comprehend those issues. In that stage, you don't need to know user interface things. Just knowing just one application, such as 3D Max or Revit, and other applications, if you need to know, you can be an expert in a couple of hours, thanks to Google tutorials and YouTube, okay? You don't need to buy your books, or you don't need to take additional courses. Anyway, after that, you can learn any other type of 3D so software, Maya, Rhino, Blender, and then you can keep going on to even more advanced applications, such as Digital Project, Revit, Bazaari, Bentley Architecture, or something else. BIM applications. Even if 3D Max is looking complicated in terms of my CAD history, this is kind of middle school level, okay? You are in undergraduate school level, four year gr grade, okay? So BIM application is currently most advanced one. Parametric modeling, solid modeling, bunch of things we are dealing with in this semester. But nowadays we are just kind of date back to 1970s, surface-based 3D modeling. So hopefully you understand where we are, okay? 3D geometric modeling and modification. <coughs> Again, 
we need to deal with this fundamental issue quickly, okay? Uh, the still shot images listed up here, this page, are all primitives, okay? Primitives means uh, primary, fundamental, basic 3D objects you can easily create by using this kind of 3D application, okay? What if you want to create very uh, curvy and very modern style, your own design chair? Probably you have to design, sorry, you have to model this one or this one first and then modify it, okay? Until your design comes out, okay? Or sometimes you need this one, donut or cylinder. Whatever, okay? Okay, quick question. Why this one is looking coarse? Why it's not looking smooth curve? Okay, why? <laughs> what, is, what is that? <coughs> what, what is that? <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, few segments, okay? It's up to LOD, geometric LOD. What is the LOD? It dependent upon which LOD you're going to use for this object. What is LOD? Level of detail, okay? If this one is kind of ring size and this one is really small in your scene, you can remain in this mode, okay? Coarse segment, few segments. It doesn't matter this one is few segments and looking coarse because this one is going to be rendered small size. No one can catch this one has few segments. But what if this one is kind of uh, couch or chair or table size? In that case, you have to put more segments so that this one look, is looking rounded, okay, realistic. But there is a con. This one going to be this one makes your model heavy, I mean more megabytes, and slow. Sometimes because of this one, your model is going to be uh, blue screen, okay? First, freeze computer. But anyway, segment issue, okay? Any type of curve has segments. Number of segments controls this kind of visualization. Even if it's looking in round shape in geometric view, in render view can be different and vice versa, okay? If there is the uh, busier curve or knob surface, it doesn't matter, I think. But if there is segment-based representation, that's kind of different issue. This one also same. This one is looking okay, looking good, but if this one has few segments, this teapot is also looking very uh, coarse. Anyway, it's interesting why this teapot is here. This is not primitive geometry, okay? Why this one is here? Why this one? This teapot is one of the primitives in 3D Max. I think I already told you before, right? Why this teapot is in this primitives? No? Primitives list. Okay, this is one type of homage to the early developers, early scientists, early computer scientists who were developing this kind of 3D computer software, okay? They are uh, research near Utah area, and this is Utah teapot. In that area, this, this shape of teapot is very common, okay? Ceramic, white colored mostly. And that researcher, research scientist in 1960s, 1970s, they tried to make this teapot in computer, okay? How to define mathematically, computationally, and eventually they 
succeed to create this geometry. And this is type one type of homage to put this one, one, one of the primitives, even if it's not actually primitive, okay? Another homage, render button is this teapot, okay? They try to make that visualization computer rendered, okay? So this teapot is iconic of rendering, iconic object. That is why render button is teapot button. Actually, there are several more things. Apple logo is one type of homage. Anyway, so create new 3D object by using those primitives and iterative modification, never ending modification until your geometry comes out, okay? Modify them again and again. Also, you can create your own 2D shape, okay? Section profile, and you can revolve it, extrude it, or sweep it, okay, by using specific paths. There are several more ways of creating 3D geometry, but not that many. I introduced you before, around five, six ways, okay? No more ways. When you are using this kind of 2D interface, GUI interface applications. So in 3D Max, 3D Max is one type of advanced geometry modeling tool. Even if it's in kind of second stage, geometric surface-based 3D modeling tool, anyway, within that category, this one has kind of most advanced one, okay? That is why this one provides amount of utilities. Utilities means this one has standard primitives and extended primitives, hundreds of modifiers, hundreds of utilities to help you to create, to modify your geometric shapes, okay? You don't need to know everything, 20, 30% if you know you are an expert of 3D Max, okay? So in the lab exercise, we are dealing with such, uh, such part for creating geometry, okay? Within this kind of geometric modeler, this is one type of final product, okay? Okay, if you are using Revit, final product is what is your final product in Revit? Hmm? Okay, it's, it's a building, okay? So if this is a building, building sub-components sub are words, columns, slab, interior finish, sometimes some products such as furniture, desk, chair, and so on, okay? So if this is a building, sub-components are building components, building elements. That is why you are designing your building in Revit. Simply drag and drop or clicking words, columns, and editing its information, <coughs> its parameters. But this is unfor unfortunately not BIM software. This is geometric 3D software. So in terms of that, final products of this kind of application is still geometry, okay? at this time, box cube geometry, okay? So, no more things. If this one is a building, the gap between this box shape and building shape is to totally up to you, okay? Computer doesn't know this one is building or not. It, it doesn't matter, it doesn't care, okay? Anyway, 3D Max, recognizes this one is kind of final product geometry. If so, what is geometry's subcomponents? Here I list up, okay? These are subcomponents, sub-elements of this geometry. That is why you have to know this part, okay? This is editable poly. In editable poly, this is representative modification method in 3D Max. In editable poly mode, you have to control vertices, polygon, or edges, 
okay? Simply because this kind of geometric modeler only knows these subcomponents, okay? This one doesn't know which one is column, wall, door, wall, and so on. This one only understands which one is vertex, which one is edge, and polygon, okay? That is why you have to control these subcomponents. But actually, there are more ways uh, by using some utilities, okay? Geometric modifiers or some geometric creation utilities, amount of utilities already defined in 3D Max or similar geometric tools. Here is an example. Originally, this one was a box shape, okay? But in modifier tab, you can put some random geometry. For example, what if you want to create uh, a pillow blanket which has something uh, randomly placed on your bed or room, whatever. You can simply choose the modifier name noise and click gizmo and you can put some, some fractal algorithm. You can apply some uh, noise seed numbers, scale number. By using such parameters, you can change the shape. But you don't know what is the final product. Anyway, this one is going to be changed. And you can create animation, which one is auto-changed. If you apply something, uh, explosion algorithm, you can generate something, can, something is being exploded, okay, in animation. Anyway, this is thanks to 3D Max developers, their powerful modifier, one of the modifiers, utilities, named noise, or fractal, whatever. This is another way of creation and modification of geometry, okay? Also, we're gonna deal with some similar modifiers, how to use them, how to apply your design, and so on, in the lab exercise. But actually, not today. Next, or next after next week, we're gonna deal with one of the major features of 3D Max specific and mental ray specific things. And also, There are more ways, but basically all from primitives anyway. But amount of more applications, such as copy and paste patterns, or auto pattern generation, auto generated geometry, and so on. So this is very typical type of tile roof of Western buildings, okay? Starts from this kind of shape. This box shape is primitive, and you can modify this one in Asian roof tile shape. And this one can be copied as an array using instance cloning, and also another x, y axis copy. And then you can create like this. And you can control, control options, control all by one. This one, this one, this one, all differently behave. So if you rotate only single one, all others, even if they are 100, they all gonna be angled like this way, or a different way, totally different way, and so on. Center axis can be controlled by you. Anyway, by using this one, from this simple geometry, simple primitive, you can create any other type of patterns or, and so on. After that, you can put some random algorithm. Someone can be missing, someone can be some different geometry, and so on. How about this? This is another box cube. One important thing is you have to put more segments, okay? So that this one can be modifiable. If there is no segment, I mean only six faces, six polygons consisting this one single box, in that case, you have very uh, few options to modify this one. 
That is why you have to put more segments, okay? And then simply apply noise fractal algorithm, and then this one can be easily, simply changed by this kind of parameters, okay? And actually, there are more ways for architects, interior architects, building architects, building designers. AEC extended, you experienced what is that, right? There are windows, doors, walls, and so on. You can create that kind of things by using parameters. But they are totally thanks to 3D Max utilities, modifiers. It doesn't mean that this one is parametric modeling tool, okay? Kind of semi-parametric, okay? That can be converted into editable poly. After that, no parameters available, okay? Basically, this one is geometric tool. We're gonna deal with this one in lab exercise hours, okay? Okay, 3D Max modeling for inter <coughs> interior architects. <coughs> As an interior architecture designer, uh, let's take a look at kind of user scenario of 3D Max or similar geometric modeling and rendering tools, okay? As I introduced you before, we need to create background, okay, universe. We don't need to create the entire universe, of course. We have to create, especially behind windows, okay, as one type of uh, fake environment and fake architectural model. We can focus on some design elements, okay. As you experienced last time, by using Revit, you can model entire building by using architectural elements, walls, slab, columns, windows, doors, ceiling, and so on. And then you can reuse that information, that geometry, using FVX file or DWG file, even in 3D Max. But sometimes we don't need to create entire building model. When you design a specific room, you need to quickly visualize that room. We can reuse simple surface-based box shape inside of that box, okay? So we're gonna deal with that part as a quick use scenario, quick visualization scenario. So firstly, create universe and create architectural environment and some interior design elements and so on. And retouching, visualizing, using the out outcomes of rendering. So for the architectural elements, we can reuse CAD files, okay? Or create everything in 3D Max. Import CAD models or some 3D warehouse models, sketch files, all are supportive in 3D Max. Newer version, okay? Also 3D Max, you can draw floor plans, okay? Sometimes it's faster and efficient and stable. At least you have to draw some section profiles to create your object, okay? And thanks to many modifiers and editable poly or some, some interface defined in 3D Max, we can take maximum advantages of such utilities to create your own uh, design elements or architecture environment. Also there are AEC extended, okay? AEC extended parametrically, partially parametric objects, such as doors, walls, windows, stairs, and so on, okay? We have experienced those parts. Anyway, thanks to 3D Max modifier or 3D Max developers, we can use them. Similar to Revit or some other BIM tools, but they are still geometry. Anyway, they have their own specific parameters. We can take advantages of them. That's my point here. And your objects, okay? The same way, importing objects or creating, modifying objects. So here I wanna show you some scenarios, okay? Firstly, unit is very important. I told you, if, you, if your unit is something different, Lighting has problem 
and some texture map, Autodesk material has some problem, okay? So we have to take care of scale first in human scale, okay? Architectural scale in millimeter. And also lighting units supposed to be international, standardized lighting options. We're going to deal with this one at the beginning of the lab exercise today. Okay, firstly, create background. This is the easiest and commonly found way of creating universe. So what if you create this kind of cylinder shape, <coughs> convert that into editable poly, and remove, remove top and bot bottom, and assign this kind of background <coughs> picture, image, high resolution, or, or some any type of images. And then you can make this one one type of virtual background, okay? This is the background image and your architectural elements, especially inside of the building, so that you can visualize this view in your visualization without any additional retouch and so on. So this is very fundamental and basic way of creation for environment, okay? as a background. So this kind of cylindric shape can make your scene in any view, some, some set of environment. And next thing is, this is AutoCAD file imported into 3D Max. You have to some some additional works, especially lightings and some, some texture maps, camera, and so on, if you have your own geometry. And of course, you have to explode geometry. Explode means convert them into editable poly and select polygons and assign different material, different colors, and so on. That kind of modification, iteration required. You already experienced this one by using FVX file from Revit, but it can be anything, okay, sketch a file, AutoCAD file, another Max file, and so on. So take a look at this very simple inside of a room, interior. There is a floor, okay, and two walls, and one ceiling, and actually a couple of windows and openings, but actually originally they are this type of box shape, okay, kind of fake, pseudo building interior. So this is one, one of the primitives, creating a box in this scale and place camera inside of that box and try to modify. This one is looking some uh, walls and some column attached ceiling, windows and so on. And exterior view can be that simple environment. This is one quick way of creating building interior, okay? So, some technical issues. Originally, this box shape is kind of box. So, if you change your view inside of this box, nothing is visible, simply because this polygon is visible only one way, okay? Not reverse way. So, you have to convert and select polygons and flip them all, okay? Flip change the outside to inside so that you can visualize it. We're going to deal with that too. Or simply change this one to 3D surface using shell modifier. If you apply shell modifier to this box surface, this one going to have sub, uh, thickness, okay? Let's take a look at an example, interior architect's user scenario. As I introduced you this one before, this is kind of quick visualization scenario. Here is a simple concept. Concept is IT-based design company, office, office design, one part of high-rise building, and this company is kind of internet-based uh, multimedia company, and their work style and main concept, one of the main concepts is media post, something like this, okay? Media wall, media post, and connected to the network. 
touchpad device built in on the post or walls and so on. There are some simple description of design concept and reference images, okay? Some media wall, media floor, media device. Another reference concept, looking a post, columns, but they have some illumination or screens and some series of multi-screens. They are some reference images. So firstly, architectural environment defined. This is a box, okay? Box shape and some enough segments and removed one single face, okay? Box object first, convert editable poly, delete one side of wall and flip them all, flip entire polygons so that this one can be visualized inside and create photometric lighting system on the ceiling and copy instances so that this one controllable by one and adjust some more options, lighting options and place a camera, target camera and control the location and the stock lens size so that this one has some wide view, okay? Focal distance option to wide view and control camera and import some geometry. Actually, this is the furniture company named Technion specific workstation DWG file and they can be copied, arrayed like this and some column objects simply modeled and some window frame vertical objects easily placed in kind of uh, 30 minutes geometric work and so on. So this is the camera view of this virtual pseudo interior by using editable poly part of the screen can be texture mapped, okay? If you convert your geometry into editable poly, and then you can assign material polygon by polygon. But if you use edit poly in modifier, in other words, if this one is one single object, not editable poly, in that case, you cannot assign separate material. You have to explode it. How to explode? Simply convert them into editable poly. Okay, and control in polygon mode, polygon level. So assign some camera toggle views and change some more options, material options and so on. And then this is kind of first stage of visualization and change the material or remove polygons, some place additional structure components and assign floor material, which has some reflective, <coughs> some, some partially glossy, bright color floor material, columns, and different camera view, texture map test, and the other type of texture mapped, and additional material for black color, stone object, walls, and some more lightings, and so on. So this is sort of final view of the image that I showed you last time. So actually this one, something like this is the lab exercise number five today, okay? Next week, we're gonna deal with something like this one based upon your design studio work. So you have to bring your design file, progress file. If you don't have, that's okay. Anyway, this is virtual pseudo interior by using box primitive. Also this one is a box. Only this one imported geometry, okay? But simple texture map and controlling lights, you can visualize something like this, okay? This is very quick and easy and very effective in terms of design concept visualization, okay? That's why I show you this one, this example. Let's take a look at some of our renderers. We are dealing with Manta Ray first, but you already know how to use V-Ray, especially when you are using SketchUp.
comparison between different renders. Pros and cons. V-Ray is known as best and best ray trace renderer. You know V-Ray style, very uh, smooth and fast and uh, comparatively very good quality image you can generate, okay? And V-Ray lighting also very good in rectangle shape light, very easy to control, okay? But this is a plugin. Manta Ray is embedded in 3D Max, okay? Autodesk and Autodesk materials, arc and design material set, all they are presets. In V-Ray, you have to control texture size, texture image, reflection, refraction, diffuse, and so on. Everything by manual, okay? But this one, you can take advantages of some, some minor options. Even if you don't control any options, you can visualize by using Mental Ray and Autodesk Material quickly and easily, thanks to their presets. Anyway, they have all pros and cons. Also some more renders. Probably you can find out more renders, amount of more renders, but they are mostly plugins of 3D geometric modeler. So you have to know some behind mechanism and the process so that you can the same way of 3D modeling tool, this type of visualization tools are uh, anyway eventually same. All they are ray trace based anyway. By using those renderers and modelers, let's take a look at some professional professionals' works, especially some examples, cgarchitect.com or 3D Total. Dot com or even more websites and amount of more cases you can find out. This one is certain type of competition, design competition, 3D Max Design Hero. And this is cgarchitect.com example. And this one is kind of meeting room interior design visualization uh, by using 3D Max. Another example, also kind of uh, manager of this example, but this one also has exterior view, probably middle of the high rise building, but that scenery, we don't need to create the entire world. Probably rounded shape or flat shape of texture map, okay, behind this window. Very bright side, controlling <laughs> windows and some render options, but they commonly use Photoshop for making this visualization much enhanced. Anyway, one type of visualization. And next example, 3dtotal.com. The good thing from 3dtotal.com is they provide some uh, tutorial, how to make, how to visualize this scene in 3D Max interface, modeler and renderer. So take a look at this example. This is 3D Max render output. And another example of 3D, 3D Max render. Okay? Very photorealistic. Thanks to the tutorial, you can take a look at how to adjust options in renderer, modeler, and so on. And how to assign texture map, which picture they use. And this is the building's 3D model. This is type, kind of some, some comparatively big size, not a single room. But anyway, no need to create something beyond this universe. Anyway, thanks to that building, this one generated amount of photorealistic render outputs like this, okay? You can refer to this example. And also some additional PDF files or examples, there are amount of things. Let's quickly look at the website that I, uh, gave you under this lab exercise folder. Firstly, this one, cgarchitect.com, under this website, some award-winning projects displayed. Actually, I introduced you this one before. So this is award-winning work. And another example, and this one, honorable mention, okay? 
And if you type <coughs> the root of this website, czarchitect.com, you can find out more examples. But actually, the tutorial lecture series in this website are not free. So, but anyway, you can refer to some examples, features, OK? Making of or tutorials. Under this uh, making of tutorial, you can take a look at some series of examples. How to make, how to visualize this scene in its uh, procedure, something like this, OK? So this is originally AutoCAD flow plan and converted and transformed to 3D Max. And this is FFD, right? Or some busier curve or some knob surface control and editing geometry and so on. Exactly same to the ways you are now use. lighting option, and so on. How about this uh, 3dtotal.com? Under this website, also there are amount of gallery examples and free tutorials. This is not only for architects. This one for some game designers or some product designers, and so on. But under this 3D Max, Maya, Blender, Blender is one of the open source, free 3D modeler. Even Photoshop tutorials are a lot. Anyway, on the 3D Max, you can find out this kind of tutorial example. How about this? This one is one example provided by this website, looking very photorealistic. But anyway, they provide this kind of uh, process of how to, OK? In this tutorial, there are several image pictures he used for making for flow material, some randomized looking natural and very precisely controlled material, and the geometry for the bed and p p pillows, OK? Amount of segments. And ex external lights. At this time, this is V-ray sun, OK? Or V-ray lightings. More pictures and material edit options, what they used. Texture map. Different texture map for pillows, different, di different, different fabric material for this blanket and word surface, and so on, OK? Bunch of configuration options he applied for this one. Also video files and some more render outputs, OK? This kind of out-focused image can be rendered by 3D Max using camera option. Some of you already very well known to such features. This one is the one that I show you today's slide, OK? And I want to have more examples for this one. Furniture design example, interior, building exterior, and so on, OK? Refer to this web, uh, this kind of professional's work. I think you can be encouraged or sometimes discouraged. Anyway, there are amount of technical resources and references you can refer to, OK? Okay, let's get into the lab exercise. <laughs>